assault and you've been found guilty, you've been found guilty for say fighting assault, right? And you now want to be uh, applying to become a teacher. So whoever reads your application will say, this chap is uh, he's got a conviction for fighting. Will they give you a job? They won't give you a job. If you were going to uh, become some sort of driver and you've been taking drugs and driving and you're convicted of taking drugs and driving, will they give you a job for driving? They won't. So it's important you understand. Any conviction, convictions when you're taken to court and you're found guilty of something, a criminal charge, that will be held against you when you come to apply for jobs. You've got to have a squeaky clean record. Squeaky clean. Yeah? That means no, no getting arrested, nothing. no getting into fights, nothing. Nothing. Any other questions from anybody? Hello, go on, stand up, son, stand up. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take you home. We're taking you with us tonight. We've got all sorts of cars. If one of the things, if you become a police officer, right, it, it's a really, really interesting job because um, you can drive any car that you want. You've got. I mean, I know you're all probably, especially the boys, are probably interested in all the fast cars. But we've got traffic cars which are from, and even Jags, do you know what the Jags are? Yeah. The new big Jags, we've got, um, we used to have Volvos, but I think they're going away from Volvos now. Uh, we're getting all new BMWs. So we've got three series and five series BMWs. Um, I mean, if, if, if that's what you really enjoy, we've got traffic. Um, I know a lot of the, the, the girls might enjoy uh, some of the forces within the police have horses. So you, you could be a police officer and you could ride a horse. Um, and you could patrol on a horse. <coughs> we used to have horses many years ago, but because of money, I think we sold them on. Um, if you want and you're lucky, you can even fly the helicopter. Um, so oh, you've got to be very good. You've got to be very good. If you work hard, even within the police, um, we started as PC, my brother Mustafa started as a PC. Um, after years and years of hard work, um, you, you do your exams, you do your interviews, um, you then, they, they then see uh, that you've worked hard and they make you a sergeant as they do an inspector and you move up. But if you work really hard and it's something you want, you can still fly the helicopter. So people come into work and they, they're on the helicopter all day. You can, you can ride the motorcycles, you can ride, you can do anything that is achievable but you must work hard in order to get there. That, that's all the, I think the emphasis is working hard to get to where you want to go and staying out of trouble. Okay, D just quickly before we take any questions, you know, so, some of the work that we do, for instance, for Muslims, at the moment we're working with the force to say, how can you change the requirements of the uniform to allow more females to join? So we're looking to have the hijab with a proper uniform crest, we're looking to have proper long trousers for them, so more Muslims can come in, because there are some restrictions in how, how Muslim women can come in. So most forces are doing that sort of work, and, and we're doing that sort of work to make sure that we not only get young men, but young Muslim females come in, because they can contribute to, to the Muslim societies, yeah? Go on. Do you handle dogs? Do you handle dogs? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we, we've, um, I'm quite lucky because I did, uh, I worked for six months with, within the dog department. Um, the only way I could describe it is I, I, I don't really like dogs. I'm, I'm quite scared of dogs. They, they do bite. Um, but I, I was quite lucky to work within a department where we train dogs. We used to have German Shepherds and Alsatians. Lately, we're going away from them um, and we're going towards Malinois. I don't know if, they, I don't know if you've seen any of them. They, they're, um, it, it's an Austrian, I think. Um, an Austrian breed. Um, I'll tell you a, a fact. How much do you think the police dog costs? So take a guess. Okay. Each dog, right, each police dog is worth a minimum of £3,000. Now, if we train a dog, if we train a dog, we could sell that dog to another police force for anything up to £10,000 because we put a lot of effort into training these dogs. Um, we, we recently bought two new dogs for West Midlands Police um, and we trained these dogs and it took us a long time to train them but we needed these dogs because 
we were, we were hiring them and getting them from, um, I think, the West Yorkshire, or, and we were paying a lot of money. So we decided to train our own. Now, these dogs are trained to such a high level that, um, do you know if somebody was, somebody was killed and buried, these dogs can sniff them out? So they could sniff the ground, and they could tell you. Basically, they're blood dogs, so wherever, if you cut your hand and put a bit of blood on a tissue, and you hid that tissue anywhere, that dog, that dog will come and find that tissue. It will sniff it out for you. It's the same as drugs dogs. So uh, we, 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 we do have a lot of dogs, and we train a lot of dogs as well, and they're very, very helpful. Um, along with the rights, they'll bite you as well if it's anything. Can you uh, also emphasize the importance of the respect agenda, because whilst our youngsters are under 18, I, I find discipline very important. Like they say don't respect the parents as role models. In life, they use the figures of rest. They have to listen to the parents. Discipline comes from the parents. You can't blame the state. You can't blame local authorities. Because the youngsters are highly important because whilst they're on the course, they have to appreciate them. Okay. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you my story, yeah? Uh, I'm, I'm a second son in my family. And I'm a sergeant. But when I walk into my mom's house, and she says, sit, I sit. If she says, jump, I say, how high? I'm still just another son in the family. I'm not a sergeant. And even to this day, even to this day, my mom and dad, I've never disrespected them. I've never disrespected them because if it wasn't for them, I would not be standing here today. Right? If it wasn't for them, you know, looking after me when I was uh, little, changing my nappies, feeding me, and this, that, yeah? If it wasn't, I couldn't do that for myself. Now I can do that for myself, it's not a time to forget them. It's actually a time to look after them in their old age. So, it is utmost importance, and the Dean teaches you that, no doubt the Molana has probably told you, that actually, the respect of your, uh, your mum and dad it is greater than most things. It's pretty much up there. It's pretty much up there in the Dean. So, at all times, you know, it's not just respect the police. Actually, your respect starts at home. When you leave the front door and, and you're in the outside big world and you encounter the police, that's a secondary respect. But your respect of your mum and dad, uh, it, you can't measure it. It goes without saying, bang on, you've got to respect your mum and dad. Absolutely. I think my story, um, I am the only brothers. Um, I have three sisters that are younger than me. Um, I've got children of my own. I've got two, uh, a, a girl and a boy. Um, exactly the same as Mustafa. If I go home now, um, my dad is so big. If I say anything that's out of order to my dad, he'll still, he'll still feel the need to tell me off or slap me. You, because you're never too old or never too big not to listen to your parents. Um, there's two very important people in your family and, and, and the wider world. First, it's your parents. You must always listen to them. And second, it's your stars. Whether they're your school teachers or whether they're in the press and they're, they're, they're your stars, because they have on par the same respect you ought to give them as you give your parents. Um, you know, if your mum and dad say to you that this isn't going to happen today or I'm not letting you do it, they're not doing that because they want to be mean to you or nasty to you. It's because they know why. They've been there and they've done that and they've seen what goes wrong with it. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So they're, they're telling you for a reason. Not because they don't like you, it's because they love you more than anything on this earth. Mm. And they wouldn't want any harm to come to you. But to, to say what the brother said behind there, you know, number one rule in life is to make sure that you respect your parents. Because I fully agree, <coughs> respect is, is bred from the home. And it starts from the home. You're all under 18, you're under your parents' guidance. Whether you like it or not, you must listen to your parents. Okay, this is very If you don't do get it right, you're going to get in trouble in this outside world. The reason I'm telling you is I'm worried about our youngsters following the role model. Why, why are boys wearing trousers, psychic trousers, and school boxer shorts at school? What sort of role model is that? That's the reason why you have to listen from, from home. Your discipline comes from home. For God's sake, start from home. Otherwise, you're out of it. And it's important what, what, what's been said there. You know, it's very easy to have your footballers as role models, to have your cricketers as role models. But actually, the success, if you want role models, you have to find them in the deed. You, you understand that? If you want success in this world, and you want to do well, you have to find your role models in the deed, and you will get success. 
you're David Beckham and your footballers ain't going to bring nothing for you. You can look up to them all your life. What are you going to get out of it? Absolutely nothing. And the other thing you've got to remember is this, right? It's very important. As police officers, we have arrested under 18 year olds. Under 18 year olds, and the first thing we do is take them straight to their parents. And they are very, very upset when we do that. Why? Because the parents have that discipline over them. You don't want to be one of those kids that wants to be taken back to their parents, do you? That would be nice. So, listen, give me a promise. Give us a promise. You will not disrespect your parents. All of you say we promise, yeah? That's okay. That's good enough. Any, any other questions? Yeah, then we need them. Because you've had a very long career in the police department, so knowing your experience over the last 25 years, you know, the Muslim criminality, do you think it's increased, or especially you know, nowadays the media and the coverage that Muslims are getting? Um, <coughs> from, what I do, from what I do in the police, the experiences I have within the organisation were very tough. I'll give you an example. I was based where Shaq's working at the moment, which is in Solihull. 